Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at the question, how long are we going to be in this bear market for? Well, we're going to do our best to answer that question looking at previous cycles. So if you want to see more of that on the channel, let me know. Hit the like button down below right here. Subscribe to the channel. Bell notification icon. Plenty of you that haven't subscribed yet, still watching the videos. It does go a long way to helping out the channel. So make sure you do those things down below. Let's dive in. All right, so I've got a question for you guys. How many weeks or months have you been in cryptocurrency? Jot that down below in the comments. All right, I want to hear from you guys how long you've been in cryptocurrency. The reason for that is we're looking at history. And what tends to happen is uh, the longer that we're in something, like we're in a market or a particular profession that we've been studying for a long time and, and working in it, the better we become at understanding that language and understanding what it is that we're doing. And so if we've only been in cryptocurrency for a few weeks, maybe a few months, maybe a year or so, we're not going to really have a grasp of what's happened in the past. And so I've been in cryptocurrency since about March, April of 2017. And so I remember the emotions of that period of the market as it went up and I stayed with the market as it went down. So it was quite costly, but now I have that experience of being with the market. And so you guys as well, hopefully you've been in it for a few months and you've got the experience of a market falling against you by 50, 60%, depending on which coins you're in. And so that's what we're going to look at today, looking at the length of these cycles, because if we've been in a short time and we've seen the gains from say January or February rising up for a couple of months, and then we saw a couple of alt seasons, maybe we got some, maybe we didn't, you know, miss, missing out on some gains, maybe we did get some. And now we've seen a few months down, we can become short-sighted to believe that we should see the market take off again. And then we become disillusioned when it doesn't, and maybe it lasts just that little bit longer than our emotions can handle that we believe the market should be down or you know it should hold down for that long and then come back up without having gone through and seen any of the past and so although we might not have the emotional experience at that time and the emotional experience is very important it's the market sentiment it's essentially this is all we're looking at on the charts it's the sentiment of the market it's the people making up the market we've got a little bit of color in there as well looking at our colored crayon candles uh, so the market sentiment is what we are charting when we are trying to determine whether the market's going to be going up, down or sideways in the short to long term. So this is a weekly chart as well. So I'm looking at macro stuff going on here. I'm looking at macro picture views for Bitcoin. And I've got a lot of numbers, so don't worry about that. We just want to look at the frames from highs to a breakout. So there, you could basically call anything from uh, like what is your definition of a bear market or a bull market is it the extreme top to extreme bottom is that as long as a bear bear market is is it from the top to the breakout is it from the top to another top or the top to the next top you know it just depends on what you are calling a bear market and sure there are plenty of explanations for it but the main thing is, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever your explanation is, it doesn't really matter. The main thing that matters is that when you measure it, that you're consistent with measuring that time and time again so that you can come back and reference it. So looking at 2011 through to the breakout point, so when the market actually broke the previous high, I'm using that because what, like I just saw this time around uh, through 2020 to 2021, as the market broke the all-time high, the media became far more extreme. And then when the, when the media comes in, that's when retail starts to pile in. It takes them a little while to get in here, a month or two, whatever. In this case, you know, that's what it, it took. Most people started to pile in through Mar uh, sorry, February and March when we were near the tops. And so I'm using that point of the breakout of the all-time high as one way to measure the uh, to measure the market sentiment and to measure the bull market or how long the bear market will last for. I also use top to bottom as well to give me an idea of could I be expecting a reversal like we like we can see here. You know, that was top to bottom was 23 weeks, but then we got a seven week climb out, another 22 weeks sideways, a nine week climb again, 21 weeks sideways, and then we took off for 13 weeks. And that's all the market had in it was just 13 weeks. And then it went sideways again for another 25 weeks. And if you're starting to pay attention here, you can really see that the numbers are pretty common. They continue to repeat time and time again. So the, the the Bitcoin market likes this sort of four, five, six month time frame. And then you could double that 
and divide it by two as well. So you've got all these divisions within those time frames. Why do those time frames work? I don't know. Ask everyone. Ask all the people. Generally speaking, I would say it's because this is how much patience people have. And when these pa- when, when the patience wears out, that's what happens to the market. You surely get to the point where it's like, nothing's happening. I'm sick of this. They dump everything. That's the last sellers. We take off. Or they say, you know, uh, I'm buying everything. This thing is going to the moon and then there's no one left to buy and it dumps from that point. So we're just measuring market sentiment. Looking at 2011 through to 2013, this was 90 weeks from top to the next breakout. So just short of two years, but we could measure top to bottom 23 weeks. The next piece, which is probably more what I'm looking at here is our 2013 run. So we've seen something like this already, you know, a nice solid bull market into our top of April of 2021. Now we've got 30 weeks. So this is April 2013 and it had 30 weeks until it broke that high again. Let's use the ruler from the top to this low, about 12 weeks, so about three months. We're getting very close to that point now. I'd say in another week's time, we're at that three month point and we're getting pretty close to another low. Maybe we've even put the low in. We, we won't know until after the fact, just like you didn't know here. You don't know what's coming on the right hand side of the screen. So if I'm looking at 30 weeks, there's another uh, data point. Now we got the top in 2013. We had 91 weeks down. Funny that. 90 weeks from a top to a breakout. 90 weeks from a top to a low. And we had 160 weeks from the top to the breakout, 120 weeks from the low to the top. Let's fast forward more to where we are today. About 157 weeks from the top to the breakout. Very similar to the top in 2013 to the breakout in 2017. We had 70 weeks from 2019 top to when we broke out. And the media started covering it in October and November. Uh, November. It started to come through. It even started a little bit earlier, but looking at this point, uh, this point here in October, you can see that the volume started to pick up. So what is the volume? The volume is just more people coming in to buy. It's actually more contracts, or in this case, more BTC being traded. Doesn't mean that it had to be all one way. It's buying and sell. So the volume here shows us that there was more interest coming in. Doesn't necessarily have to be more people, uh, which I said earlier, but it's just more interest. So a lot more interest is coming. Then we get even more interest at the highs. We get some more interest when it breaks out. So 157 weeks, spare us a few weeks. Look, it's pretty similar, 160, 157. Then uh, we see our uh, moves. So now I want to measure the moves up. So from this low to our current high, about 57 weeks. So that's another big reason why I don't think this uh, bull market overall is over. But the question I put at the beginning of the video is how long will this bear market last? And I've talked about three to 12 months quite often. Is that measure from the top to when we break out again? Potentially. I've said it many times where I think it's going to be at least that sort of three to 12 months from the high to when we reach that all-time high again. Now, I said three months back in April when the market started to tank. I had no idea how long it would last, but I said it through this period. We had 11 straight days down here and we had never seen that in Bitcoin, 11 days down, higher, uh, lower high, lower low. We had never seen that. People were calling for $80,000 Bitcoins in May. Go, You can go back and check this all out. Same people who are calling for more bull market over and over again. Uh, altcoin hunting seat, all this sort of stuff, right? It's just always bullish, always bullish, which brings up another note about being too bearish all the time, but forget those people for now. 11 straight days down, that doesn't happen regularly, if ever, on Bitcoin. Therefore, I expect something dramatic to happen. I didn't know what it could be, but it just had had to happen. Uh, and so that's why I thought, look, at least three months, at least three months. We've got to three months now. So there's the top. Here's the next point. There's 12 weeks. So three months is 13 weeks. All right. I don't think we're going to shoot to the all-time high next week. So I look for about six to 12 months from this point now, beneath the old all-time high. So if I look at six months, it's going to take us to about 26 weeks, 27, 26. So it's going to take us into October before we could potentially see the all-time high. I think at the moment, a lot of people aren't expecting us to get to the all-time high this year. We'll wait and see until we break some of these highs that we've just set in June. And maybe we start to retest the mid to high 40s. And that's going to give us a lot more confidence. Once we start to break through 45, 47, then we can see 
that um, like the, the time frame is getting a lot shorter to where we should break out. So in terms of a bear market, top to the current low, we're at 10 bars. How long do I think from this point? Like I said, six to 12 months, that gives us 26 to about 52 weeks. Now you can see where I'm basing that on. I'm looking at stuff like 70 weeks top to the breakout. Considering we're in a solid bull market at the moment, I think it might be somewhere in that region. And then I look back at 90 weeks and also 30 weeks. So if I average out a few of the total weeks, uh, total measures that we've seen previously, we've got 70, we've got 30 weeks, we've got 90 weeks, about 190 divided by three to give us an average, about 63 weeks. So it's about a year and a couple of months. That's why I've stuck with sort of six to 12 months because I, I see that we're still in a longer term bull market and we could potentially take off a bit sooner. So I wanna be prepared in case we do, but I'm not concerned if it does take that full 12 months or an extra few months after that. But I definitely don't think that it's, uh, I don't think it's a short period. I don't think it's a V-shaped recovery. I'm prepared in case we do run up and everyone gets excited again, expecting higher prices. And then I'm just waiting for this pullback. If we don't get the pullback, we have signals to get back into the market because this is our bullish to bearish flip. But at the moment, that's the way I'm looking at the market. How long will we be in this potential bear market? I'm thinking around that six to 12 months, potentially that 63 weeks if I average out those other periods. Now, the last point I want to mention is another time frame here, 37 weeks. So this is from the top in 2019. Things were getting really hot. If you weren't in the market in 2019, this was the, it was almost thought that we would run away to a new all time high. I started believing it as well. It was just too good to be true. This thing just kept running and running and running. Doesn't look like much now, obviously with our $60,000 Bitcoin, but back in 2019, this was crazy. And then, and then the period of sideways took over after we topped out and we started to go sideways. Then we got a few breakdowns thinking we're going to recover again. Another breakdown. We thought we were going to recover here in December. COVID came and then we tried again. So there were a lot of false starts. And so far, I haven't seen one real false start. So I'm expecting at least a false start. I want to see at least one false start and then just hype everyone in, dump on them again, because that's just going to balance out all of the emotions in this current period of the market. Uh, so that's that was one last thing I wanted to mention here. It has happened before. If you want to take the time to go and research this, you could check out 2019 uh, Bitcoin and crypto videos on YouTube and just see the excitement and then the disbelief through this period of another few months. You go from the top to where it broke down on this bar. There's 13 weeks. So on the 13th week, it broke down and just crapped all over everyone. We thought it would come back, tested the underside and then fell away again. So there, there are false starts to be had and I haven't seen one of those yet. And once we get the false starts, then we can basically measure those uh, moving forward as well. So it'll give us an idea of is this going to be a shorter period underneath the all-time high of like a six month or is it going to be a longer period of something like a 12 month? So how long will this last? Like I've, like I've mentioned and hopefully I've given you a bit of an idea of how I'm measuring those time frames out. I'm thinking at least six months, potentially somewhere out to the 12 month period. If the market does go up uh, before then, then we'll have some signs because it will start to break our 50% levels and we'll see that early on. Should the market, should Bitcoin start to take off, I would expect that alts would then begin to bleed again on their BTC value. And so this, this, this takeoff is something that we can see in other altcoins as well. So we got Aave, which we were looking at yesterday. I expect a few of these uh, false starts and this sort of hypes the market up. You've seen it all across YouTube. You've seen people going altcoin hunting and sniping for altcoins and all this sort of stuff, right? But again, we still just got lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. Patience is my game. If you want to be a real sniper, just be patient. Be patient with the market. That's all I can really say from this point. You can see it again. Lower highs, lower highs. Some lows are getting broken here. Patience is, is the game until we see a breakout of the trend and then a reversal and a solid uh, low come in and form before we can start to move again. Now, recapping the news from the last couple of days on Grayscale Bitcoin Trust Unlock. You can see here from July, we've got a lot of Bitcoin being unlocked. So this could play into a short term 
movement on Bitcoin. Remember, I don't often use the news as a way to justify whether I'm getting into a Bitcoin position long term. I like that. And I look at the fundamentals of a particular project and something that I want to hold. And so what I'm looking at here is this could be some news, some sort of catalyst in the market to get it to move. And then that gives another opportunity to get into some Bitcoin. We look at the fear and greed index and use that as some sort of uh, buying opportunity. So you've got this here from BYBT, so bybit.com, Grayscale, uh, Bitcoin Trust Unlock. So we got, they got a lot of cryptocurrencies that's to be unlocked starting on the 13th, 13th of July. So we're the 8th, 8th at the moment, another five days from now. 14th, they have another 2,500 BTC. Then they have about 5,200. We go to this bar over here, 16,000. We go to the later in July, another 8,000. So there is a fair bit to come out. You know, we looked at 16,000 as that one day. That was around $540 million. There's going to be another $540 million. It's about a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin to be unlocked uh, within the next couple of weeks from Grayscale Trust. On the flip side to that, Visa partners with 50 crypto companies. All right, so there's a lot of good news as well. That's why I'm looking at this as being a short-term catalyst until the market can clean up if they're actually selling any of their Bitcoin, uh, you know, see if the market can withstand that supply. Because long-term, we've got a lot of good stuff coming for cryptocurrency and of course, Bitcoin as well. Visa partners with 50 crypto companies. These are the ones that hand out the cards. So if you've got crypto cards such as crypto.com, CoinZoom, etc., BlockFi, Circle, they're adding stable coins to it. The stable coins they're adding is uh, USDC. So you could possibly start making payments with those. Uh, well, obviously, we can still use the cards. But the main thing here is that we can now convert and spend our digital currency at over 70 million merchants. So rather than having to sell off your cryptocurrency in the apps and then use the fiat to uh, pay for the goods, now it can all be done automatically, or at least that's what we're hoping for with this announcement. So although it seems like, well, how long is this bear market lasting? It's all bearish news. How can you talk about FUD all the time? I'm just planning for the future and looking, I, mean, I guess just looking at the news, seeing what is potentially coming up now, what's potentially coming up later, have the fundamentals, the most important thing, have the fundamentals change? No, we're getting more adoption. So I guess you could say the fundamentals have changed, but in terms of Bitcoin, no, the fundamentals are still the same. Bitcoin still does what it's always done and will continue to do uh, for the foreseeable future. I'm just looking at timeframes to let me know, should I be excited if the market climbs 10% in a couple of days? Personally, I'm not. And that's why I'm playing the altcoin market. So I hope you found some value from that video. Let me know in the comments down below. One, how long have you been in cryptocurrency? Have you experienced some of these epic rises and falls in the market? And two, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? How long are we going to be in a Bitcoin bear market? Comments down below. Follow us on Instagram for daily Q&As. Twitter for tons of news and comments and just good times over on Twitter. The, the Investor Accelerator Lite is out now. Huge discounts for the first 500 people. We're at about 300 now, so 200 spots left. Check it out. Link to that is down below. And that's basically it from me. All right, I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.